Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. This is L. Rolls reporting live from the Forex Supermodel building, about to interview Professor Code on further aspects of the modelling. Welcome to the Forex Supermodel lab. I'm going to just do a quick recap on the previous video, which tells you how to do the basic raw data and calculate it for the complexes. Remember, there's four complexes dollar, euro, yen, pound. And we can calculate each individual complex from their separate FX pairs. Each complex has three FX pairs associated with it. For example, the dollar has the euro dollar, the pound dollar and the dollar yen. Now, you need to work out what's happening in terms of flows in terms of the individual complex. So, we know that we get these figures, minus 142 or 142, which relates to the week 18th to the 10th, 2020, from the open minus the close. Now, in this case, the euro went up 142 points during that period, during the week. Now, but because we're not looking at the euro, we're looking at the dollar, we reverse that out and we say that the dollar lost 142 points. Likewise, the pound dollar, um, the pound went up 141 points, so the dollar lost 141 points. We reversed it out. Now, in this case, the dollar yen, the dollar is the driving currency here, the first currency, so we can read it straight, and the dollar lost 65 points. Now, if you add these up, keeping the signs uh, in line, you get minus 348. Now that, that figure represents the, the net positive or negative flows for that complex during that period. Now, if we look at the results for the other complexes, we can see that the dollar was minus 348, as we said. The yen was minus 75. They were the negative flows. The pound was plus 193. And the euro was plus 230. They were the positive flows. Now remember that the negative flows on this side must match the positive flows on this side because they've they just reversed out. They've come from what's come from somewhere has gone to somewhere else because we've set up the model in that way. Now the negative flows 348 plus 75 come to 423. And 193 plus 230 also comes to 423 so we know we're correct so that's the first thing so that's where we left it now we need to assign values for the different complexes now the way we do this is we look at we look at the figures and we say what's the biggest positive or negative figure in this case it's minus 348 because it's bigger than the positive 230 so we designate this D for driver. The next thing we do is we look at the opposing flow and we say uh, what's, what's the, the biggest opposing flow? So in this case it's a positive 230. So we designate this SD secondary driver. Now the next one we look at what what complex has actually moved the least? And in this case, it's, it's the yen, which is minus 75, because it's moved less than 193 of the pound. And we designate this R, standing for the rock. Now the one left, we designate M, and that stands for mover. I'll write this down in a minute. Um, so that you get a, a better grip of it. 
So we can see from this that the dollar was the driving currency. Now we can also say it was the negative driver because it's the biggest on the negative side. Looking at the other side, we've got the positive secondary driver. We've got the rock, which is negative. So we've got a negative rock and we've got a positive mover. Now that's the first thing. We're assigning names and values to these uh, complex flows, which is important for later on when we go further down the modeling route. Now, I'll write this out again so we can uh, get a better understanding of it. Right, so these are the four assignments for the complexes. The driver, which is the biggest positive or negative from the data. So in this case, minus 348 was bigger than the other positive, which was plus 230. So we know the dollar is the negative driver. The secondary driver is the next biggest opposite sign. So we had a negative driver, so we've got a positive secondary driver. So the euro at plus 230 is the positive secondary driver. The rock is the smallest positive or negative. In this case, it's the yen minus 75. And finally, the mover is the one that's left for simplicity. So in this case, the mover is the pound at plus 193 points. Now, these assignments or designations are important because it enables us to go to the next stage in the modeling. And also, when we do the daily briefing, which is starting, to, to understand the daily briefing, it, you will need to know what these are. So, for example, if this had been the, the data, I would have been saying that the, the dollar is the uh, opposed negative driver. Now, I've used a, something different there immediately. It's opposed. What do I mean by it's opposed? Well, it's opposed in this case because it's, it's not the only negative driver. In other words, uh, points are flowing out of the dollar but they're also flowing out of the yen albeit in a minor manner because this is the rock and in this case the full description of the complexes from this data would be the dollar complex is the opposed negative driver and it's opposed because it's it doesn't have a free hand in sucking out all negative points out of the market the yen is also, albeit in a very minor way in this case, um, negatively driving, but in a minor manner. So we don't call it, we call it the rock. So what's the, op the opposite of um, opposed negative driver is the unopposed negative driver. Now I'll explain what that is in a minute. Right, so in our original example, the dollar was the negative driver and we took it a little bit further and we said the dollar was the opposed negative driver and it's opposed by the yen. Now you can get situations which happen less often but they are quite regular where the dollar would be driving the market on its own in this case it would be negatively driving again but it would be the unopposed negative driver. Now this is an extreme case, but as I said, it happens reasonably frequently depending on the time frame you're looking at. Now, so the dollar is the unopposed negative driver. And it's unopposed because there's nothing else on the negative side. So in this case, the dollar is the unopposed negative driver, and then the next, the one that moves the least is the yen, let's say, and that would become the positive rock. And the, remember that the secondary driver is the, the biggest opposite sign. So the euro, say, would be this one. So we'd have a positive secondary driver. And the one left is the positive move. So you can see that we can designate 
complex flows and then assign them a description or a value, if you like, um, from that point. So on the daily briefing, it's important to understand what I'm talking about when I say unopposed or opposed, because it has implications on how the currency complex and the individual FX pairs will move. So like I say, in this case, we've got the negative opposed dollar driving the market. So that we've got the opposed negative driver and it's opposed because we've got some other complex in the negative quadrant here. In this case, the yen. Here, we've got a more extreme case where the dollar is negatively driving all on its own and everything else is incurring positive flows. Now, I talk about the opposing positive flows. So, if the dollar is uh, being sold off heavily, sucking out, everybody's, everybody's selling the dollar, these flows out of the dollar are going into the other three complexes. In this case, the yen, the pound and the euro. And so, they're called opposing flows. Now, so when we look at um, complex flows, we need to understand the nature of the flows and we need to assign them uh, values so that we can analyze them properly in terms of the models. And that's where we're at really. Um, you, need to, you need to get comfortable with the idea that if it's, if it's uh, an opposed negative driver, then you've got something opposing it. And if it's unopposed, you don't. Now this is the negative side. I'll show you the positive side now, as we uh, just to show you the other side of the model. Right. Right. So this is the other side. This happens as often as anything else. So let's imagine that instead of a negative opposed driver in the dollar in the previous example, we've got a, a positive opposed driver in the pound. So in other words, the pound was the biggest plus or minus figure. So we'd assign this. In the same way we'd say the pound was the driver because it was the biggest positive or negative. The dollar in this case would be the secondary driver because by definition it would be the biggest negative or opposing sign. The yen would be the rock and the euro would be the mover. So we've got a positive opposed driver in the pound. And it's opposed, remember, because in this case the yen is also attracting positive flows, albeit minor positive flows because it's the rock, but it's attracting positive flows nevertheless. So that means that the pound is the, the opposed positive driver. Now, the extreme case of that would be if the pound was driving purely on its own in a positive manner, so everybody was piling into the pound in the forex market. All the pound pairs which make up the complex were, were being bid. Everything's going up to the, to the exception of anything else. Happens maybe interest rate example or the usual Brexit noise. Now, in this case, the pound is the unopposed positive driver because there's nothing else there. There's no other complex in its positive segment. Now the yen in this case would be the rock, the dollar would be the secondary driver and the euro would be the mover. So we'd have a negative rock, a negative mover and a negative secondary driver. So they're, they're the two extremes if you like. That's, that's a, a positive unopposed driving extreme and in the previous example we had a negative unopposed driving extreme and then the more normal situation is when you, it's, it's opposed so you've got a positive driver opposed by something else or a negative driver opposed by something else now that that is important to grasp as I said because we're going to use this 
as we go forward um, to explain the next stages of the modelling and how you can actually anticipate FX pair movement via the, the transmissions in the complex flows. Right. This is Al Rolls reporting from the Forex Supermodel Lab where Professor Code has been explaining how to assign complex values. I'm now off to see the senior trader. Yeah, up your RSA as well, pal. Did you see the monk along the way? Good. Now, as a senior trader, it's my job to trade the models. It's my job to reflect what the model says in the trades. In other words, it's my job to trade the hell out of the complexes. Now, how do we do this? The first thing is, you must always be calm, mellow, in touch with yourself, that type of thing. As you know, I am always calm. Always. What else do we know? We don't use any of the junk that most traders use in this model. Now here, what's the first thing we don't use? Fundamentals. The fundamental things don't apply. They certainly don't apply. We go straight in there. What's the next thing? Data prints. Data prints? That's where data comes out. Ooh, it's above consensus. Ooh, it's below consensus. Do we care? Technical. As I said, you haven't seen the uh, Techno Monk around, have you? Good. <laughs> Technical, as I like to call it, cave art. Now, do we use all these pretty lines? Do we use trend lines? All the rest of it? No. Straight in the bin. What's the next one? Stops. You're kidding me, aren't you? Stops. Just stop. Noise. Noise? Really? Nah. And finally, analysts. Do me a favour. Analysts. Straight in the bin. That's it. So what do we use? Well, we use my years of experience and massive intellect. This is Al Rolls reporting from the Forex Supermodel Building. Next stop, the Risk Manager. Hi there, Trading Cats. It's the Risk Manager. It's my job to avoid the three lemons. You dig? Three lemons. Who should we blame? The senior trader. 
No. The senior trader's job is to reflect the models in the trades. It's my job to basically stop getting three lemons from the trader. That's it. It's as simple as that. We mustn't go three lemons. We need to hit the jackpot. That's all we need to do. This is Al Rolls signing off from the Forex Supermodel Building. To sum up a day of explanations where we had Professor Code explaining assigning values and the extremes of the modelling, the senior trader giving us his insights into what he doesn't use for trading and the risk manager making sure that the organisation does not get three lemons. Signing off, Al Rolls, Forex Supermodel.